Hey guys, Keith here, Two Guys How To. There's good old June. We're getting ready to fix something else as usual. And today we're working on, um, it's a bun and it's the Slurpee machine or whatever you want to do, frozen drink. Let me get over here, June. And uh, it's actually, the, the model is the Ultra 2. So it's an Ultra 2 model. And it's an older model, but it's still a good model. And the problem we were having with this particular unit was uh, the tick clock on the display always said tick clock right here. So we went ahead and researched it a little bit and we went ahead and got a, there's a, there's a, it looks like a battery in there, like a big watch battery, but it's actually electrical components that you can change out that supposedly will fix the tick clock. Um, but sometimes on these circuit boards in here, they get a little burn spot. So you go ahead and you pay 50 bucks for that kit because there's only one company that we saw that has that comes with a kit to fix that little battery thing with the, uh, the electronics inside. But on sometimes if they have the burn spot on the board, you might as well just get the new board. And everybody says, oh, they're 200. Well, they're not. We got a brand new one. And these newer boards, the newer model number, it'll still fit the older machines, but it has the built-in tick clock. They bypassed all that with their own resistors and they, they did away with that watch battery looking thing. And everyone says they're $200. I put an offer into these people, uh, Coffee Express on eBay, and uh, we got it for 160 bucks. So it's $40 off of what everybody's misleading you to think that they are 200. Normally they are. These guys gave us, we put in the bid at 160, um, an offer, they accepted it, tax, shipping was free, etc. So a total of uh, 169.80. Um, man, and it came, it's only been what? three days, something like that. They also gave us a coupon, Coffee Express, 10% off your next purchase if you go directly to their website. Nine times out of 10, I don't, you might. So um, it, it's kind of good to save you 10% if you need more stuff for these particular machines. The hoppers, the lids, any of the handles, spring assembly, uh, the drip tray, which we're gonna order for this particular unit. So this is the Bun Ultra 2. And uh, we got a brand new circuit board, and the circuit board kit that we got, the number is a 44039. Uh, and uh, it's brand new, and it bypasses that battery, so that the ticks is built into this, this board. So we're gonna break this thing down, and it's pretty easy. All you need is a, a flathead screwdriver and a stubby one. One's longer than the other. You need the stubby for the little harder spots, this for the easier to get to spots. June has a little screwdriver here um, to get these little connections off. That's pretty much the hardest part of the whole thing is getting the connections off. And uh, before we open this, we're gonna make sure that this board does match the board that's coming out minus the, the ticks clock. And uh, we're gonna break this thing down. We've got it outside um, just because we're testing it. And we're gonna, we're gonna take these side panels off. And um, what screws do you have in there? Just these little teeny ones? There's yeah, there's there's two screws over here on the side. So if you're looking at the machine on the right hand side, you got two screws up underneath here. This panel comes right off, and that's the panel that says all your information. This is the Ultra Dash 2 unit. That was there. He took that off. Identical. Yeah, you just undo the screws a little bit, and they pop out. Uh, you don't need to take them all the way out. Good. Yep. All right, so we just pop this, this front cover off. It just pulls straight down. And just be gentle with it. You kind of got to bring it out and pull it straight down. And be careful because the, the main circuit wires are on there. And uh, we'll show you here. Let me get in close. You can see this connection goes up in there. And this is your display in the very front. That's your controls there, your buttons and they get hooked into this main part that goes to the inside that circuit panel there. And your other main wire and harness is right there. It comes to all your other relays and, and et cetera, sensors, temp sensor, and it goes into that board too. So he's also got a Phillips head screwdriver, which we didn't show you before. Just a Phillips head, take off these screws. And that circuit board will just come right out. And that's what we're gonna swap out. So we're gonna gently pull that back. 
And this is your, your tick clock here, back behind this little circuit panel that runs in with this jumper wire on this older circuit panel, the circuit board. We don't need that. And you can just see it looks like a big juiced up watch battery, but supposedly inside there, there's a bunch of electrical components. And the tick clock basically holds your memory for your different settings when you want it to turn on and maybe chill, and when you want the augers to turn. And there's a way you can, uh, on this old panel, you can save the settings and program them into this new panel. Yeah. We're going to have to pop it off and see. Hopefully it works because I'm trying to get this thing ready for this party and have some, uh, some grain alcohol slurpees coming out of here. And this is, is kind of a little bit of a, a hard shore here. June's good at getting this off but it's got this little teeny tab here. And let me set this camera up so I can help him do it. Last time we actually had to team up on it. And uh, you gotta pull this little tab out, kind of pop it out of there, as well as uh, somebody pulling on it. So let's see if I can get this right, right up in there. And he's taking a little screwdriver and just putting it in the back side there and he, and he pried it up and just you got to be super super gentle with it okay so this this most likely is for another machine we just need here and here and this is probably for a newer updated machine that's got a ton more bells and whistles on it and um, when I'm looking at the circuit boards I didn't notice that at first all we need is this this part and this part and it looks like they've got the, the tick clock built in right here into the circuit board. And it's got other, other plug-ins here for that other machine that this circuit board most likely would go to. And you want to be careful with this. Um, just don't touch anything. Don't get any water on it. And we can compare them side by side here. Very similar. So uh, we're good to go. And if you can see on this board here, this is burned. This is totally burned. This circuit is ruined. So even though this tick clock it's saying is bad, yeah, this one's burned here and this one's burned. So even if you would have spent 50 bucks on this little tick clock uh, watch battery looking thing, it wouldn't even have worked. These components, if you plugged it in, you would have still had problems with this machine. So let's go ahead and hook this back up using the Phillips head screwdriver. June's gonna hook that up. What'd you say? Oh yeah, cause this screw here went to that, that tick clock circuit board right here off this old panel. So we don't need it. We're just gonna put the screw back in just to keep it in there. Looks to be lining up, identical. Oh, can you just get the two in there? You get three screws out of four. You have room in the back to put the extra screw for later. Yeah, on this circuit panel, it's got four, four holes, but the fourth one here won't line up with this old tray. So we're gonna take this off gently. Uh, I don't know if I'd do that. Let's just take it out. We're just going to have one hole that's going to be. We don't. We don't want to put it in because you don't want anything touching it. So let's just leave one bolt out. We'll put it inside the machine somewhere in a little bag or tape it in there. But uh, you'll be fine with just with just the three bolts. Is going to be plenty to hold that thing in there.
You don't want to tighten those up too much. Just snug them down. You don't want to crack that board. Uh, just get them in there. When, once they touch, give them a little bit of snugging, and that's a done deal. He, we, he, he went ahead and plugged this in, and we had some dielectric grease that we put in there the other day when we diagnosed this problem. So you can put a little bit of dielectric grease that's made by Permatex. And this is the dielectric grease here. And uh, we're not going to put it here. We're just going to put a little bit on this connections here. Let me see here. This is the part that plugs in to the machine. And just all you need is a little finger's worth. Here, can we show them where this is going, June? Just right down in these little connectors where the pins are going to go. You want to make sure it's seated because this will make it slippery too. All right. He's just going to put that right on in there. Does it feel pretty secure when you plugged it in? It made a little snapping noise. Okay. Uh, yeah, and this has a cover. This little display has a cover, which you can take off. You can leave it on. Just take, go ahead and take it off because it's behind this other cover here. And to reinstall this front plate, you just basically pushing it, starting from the bottom, push it up and uh, put the bolts back in around this back side here. And then there's another one over here, which I'm gonna go ahead and start for June right here. Hard for me to do and hold the camera. I'm gonna have to just let him do that and get raw. And these are flathead screws. Very simple. If I can get it in there. Good. Yep. And just pull it forward, tighten them down. Once again, just snug them down. You don't want to break anything. Good. Where's that screw? This one? No. That's extra Oh, and right here on the, it's a little teeny screw that you could use a nut driver or a flathead and it goes right in the middle of this front cover plate. And I'll see if I can get over his shoulder so you can see where it is, it's up underneath there. You can see it down up in there, right there. That's it, the three bolts hold the front cover on and it slides up into here. There's a little lip, slides up in there. That's a done deal. Yep, put the side panels back on. Once again, they've got a little lip right here. Just slides up in there. And they got some screws way down here as well. These are just on the bottom and June had left them in. We took some out, but you just slide them in, hold those in tight. Get them finger tight and use the screwdriver to go ahead and tighten them up. Yeah, it's what you got the little the little teeny screwdriver for. That way it can fit underneath there. If you're inside the restaurant, up on the counter, things pretty heavy. It actually is a very heavy little unit. So you need that little stubby flathead screwdriver for that on that side and there's two over here as well just hold this make sure you hold this panel in when you're tightening it This one back here might need a little bit snugging in. Oh, 
And if we were in the restaurant, this would be a heck of a lot easier. We're outside and uh, we just wanted to diagnose it and run it out here and clean it out with the hose. So now when we turn this thing on, the tick clock should be gone from it. The code, the error code, and uh, let's plug this in and see if the error code is missing. Hopefully it is. And it's gonna turn on. And the display is a little bit different. It's blue, I think the old one was green. And you heard it click. And it's running through all these default codes. Let's see if we can let you see that there. And it says restore defaults. It ran through them all and it put at zero. And you can see it's off. It actually, it knows what day it is. Uh, so that whole, that whole ticks clock is set up. It's saying 1014. It could have came from Illinois or something and that's what time it would be out there. It'd be an hour difference, three, three hours on the West Coast. So uh, most, we'll just reset the time, but if the date is right, and we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and check this thing, turn the coolant side on, on ice. And we'll check the auger. Auger's on. Turn the auger off. So it's off. And it actually, these augers uh, have a little delay. The, uh, the other circuit board turned them right off. And uh, I know we were having a problem with the solenoid on this side. So let's see if we can get this to freeze up. Yeah, and it just clicked on, so we're good at ice. Left ice, left augers on, boom. No tick, no tick warning on here. All we have to do is get into this memory here and reset this clock. So we're good. And uh, we're gonna see if this freezes up. That, that solenoid might be still good based on the circuit board with those two burnt circuits. Circuits, excuse me. Those, those could very well go over and mess with these chill solenoids that are located on the side here, on the left side. You can see the TXV and the the, air, the the cooling lines come into these two solenoids over there that go to each each different uh, chill zone up in these hoppers. So we're going to let this thing run and we're going to watch these uh, underneath the auger chill down. And it looks like it's already starting to kind of frost up. You want to keep the augers off unless you have water in there because the ice will form on there and uh, these augers will start binding up. So let's go ahead and just turn these augers off. Left off. And that's it. And we're going to let this thing run for a while. Um, we're outside. So it's going to take a little bit longer for it to cool cool down than as if you were inside the air conditioning restaurant or a little convenience store or wherever you've got these so we're going to let it run and um i'm liking it it's not displaying any of the the tick code up here at all and we can run up run it through i'll turn it off i'll turn it back on saying it's the ultra version and it's got all these different settings in it depending on what unit you've got. So it's already up to date. This, this circuit board's a good deal. And uh, why spend $50 to fix the, the tick part? And then next thing you know, you got burned out circuitry on that panel. You know, chances are it could be just the ticks. Maybe it's something else that made the ticks go bad. So in our, our opinion, what do you think, June? Just the new boards. It, it's a better deal. You're gonna spend that 50 bucks and then you're gonna end up spending another 160 on this board. Just put the 60 or put the 50 towards the $160 board. Call these guys. Bun doesn't make the old board. Yeah, Bun doesn't make those tick clocks. You can't get them from Bun. So just call, go on eBay, call Fee Express. They're not paying us to say this. I wish they did. Get that circuit panel. They've got a bunch of them in stock. I'm not sure how many more they have left. All from 160. They accepted our offer. We had it here in two, three days. So uh, we're gonna turn this thing on again and let it chill. We've got a party Saturday or Sunday coming up and we're gonna put grain alcohol on here with fruit and uh, it's gonna be a good deal.
I'll show you what's up over here, show you the machines working. There's two guys how to, how we do it. You can see the machine right here, this is uh, grain alcohol and probably almost uh, a gallon and a half fruit punch. We want 100, 150 proof uh, grain. And everyone's always complaining it's too strong, so I just added some uh, water. And you can see it's freezing up, totally frozen. I got it on chill right now. And on this side, we're running, uh, we're running some uh, Turkey Hill. The rainbow sherbet, I had the orange sherbet, but uh, we ran out, so I went to the basement. That's what we had in the other refrigerator before I run to the store. And I added two, two of these to one pint. What's up? And, uh, we're gonna mix this right in. This is how you do it. They're, they're loving this drink right here. I love my wife so much, I can't even kiss it. I usually use two of these, two of these to one, uh, one of these half gallons of sherbet. But, uh, let's make it strong. They've already, they've already warmed up to the other stuff, so we'll hit them hard. Just put that bad boy right in there like that. Just let that machine turn it up. Just turn it up. Spray a little bit of this out. Give him that holiday mix. Give him that good mix. And that's a done deal. Let it mix up. Put the lid on it. Set this thing down to chill, which it's already on. And uh, I don't know whose cup this is. But you can see the one, the one cup that's in there already. Uh, comes out. It's kind of like a mimosa, but frozen. Well, good. Fix that machine. Fill it up with whatever you want. And uh, get tipsy. Two guys out too. I'm out. I'm not a pig. I'm a lawyer. <laughs>